welcome to another tutorial video. This video will be about exam.net, but not for the students. This video will be about exam.net for teachers. We will discuss how to set up an exam along with the many settings that come with it. You might be surprised by some of the features that exam.net provides. Before we get into the fun part, we need to log in. In order to do that, we need to first click on the Teachers tab. If you do not have an account, then you can create one by clicking on the yellow Register button. Then, fill in the specified information with your own. If you already have an account, then all you need to do is enter your email address and password, or log in through Google. After logging in, press the New Exam button to create a new exam. Give it a suitable name, and then choose the exam style. This is basically how you want the students to see the questions. The first option, no digital exam questions, means that none of the questions are presented in exam.net. This can be useful when you want a physical test paper, but want virtual answers. The next option, which is the use of a, of a PDF file, allows you to upload a PDF file. And the last option, write exam questions, allows you to write down your own questions. Or, optionally, you can paste a Word document there. If you choose to write one yourself, you can also find some features you, find, you would find in Google Docs or Microsoft Word. You can even insert images. For the math teachers and the physics teachers, there's also a special characters option that allows you to enter symbols often found in your subjects. Another feature that students might enjoy is whether or not the question appears in the answer area or separate area. After selecting your preferred setting, you can press OK. After that, you can choose what you want to know about the students before they start the exam. Most are just simple things like first name, last name, and email. Time to change what the students can do in their tests. Writing area is the area where the students can put their answers. If you turn it off, then they won't be able to answer in exam.net. If spell check is allowed, then the students will have assistance in their spelling. The next option will do exactly what it says it does. It will allow students to submit written work through their phones. These next few features are miscellaneous ones. They are not so much necessary as they are convenient. Accessibility tools are a good example of this. As a test could function without it, however, it could prove useful to the right people. Audio files are also quite useful and allow you to insert audio files for the students to listen to. Subject tools allow students to access programs such as Desmos for math students. And finally, external resources allows teachers to link websites for the students to use during the tests. The next few options are for security. The higher the security, the harder it is for students to cheat. High security forces students to use SEB which does not allow third-party websites to be in use while simultaneously stopping them from switching screens. Allowing browsers but preferring high security will allow students to use any browser, but it will notify you if they do. They are now able to tab out or switch tabs, but they must give a reason along with your permission to re-enter the test. And finally, allowing any browser will allow students to use any browser they want with no other effects. There's also a low security mode, which allows you to decide what happens to the students if they change tabs. Finally, you're able to finish your exam and publish it by pressing the Create the Exam button. After that, you can manage your exam in the My Exams page, which allows you to see your exams along with their name, exam key, status, and more. watching another tutorial video and I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.